So as we talked about in our last video, the new Google Sign-In Library contains a number of improvements over what we had before. It's smaller, it's a better user experience, and it accepts all Google accounts even if they're not Google Plus accounts. But how exactly do you add it to an iOS project? Well, let's find out in this exciting episode of Route 85. So I have a fresh new Xcode app that I want to add the new Google Sign-In Library to. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do everything in Swift 1.2, but it's very similar in Objective-C, just you know, like add a few more brackets here and there. Now, the first thing I'm going to go through is going through all of the configuration and setup steps. Always the most fun part of any project. That, that, that was sarcasm. Actually, it's not too bad now with the new configuration flow that we have. So the first thing I'll do is go to developers.google.com slash mobile slash add. Now I'll need to enter my project name and my bundle ID here. And on this next page, I'm going to select sign in and click the enable button. It's going to go ahead and create an OAuth client ID for me behind the scenes, which is very helpful. And uh, I don't need to do anything else right now, so I'm just going to click continue. And then on this last page, I have a plist file that I am going to download. I also have this important line of text that I'm going to need for my pod spec file, so let's copy that. Okay, up next, I'm going to configure my CocoaPod to install the Google Sign-In Library. I'm, I'll assume you know a little something about CocoaPods, but if not, why not check out this video? So I'll do a little pod init here, edit the file, and paste in that line I copied earlier from our configuration tool. You'll notice this is the Google slash Sign-In CocoaPod, which not only includes Google Sign-In, but also a few helper libraries that will help me with the configuration process. So I'm going to type pod install, and CocoaPods will download the Google Sign-In Library for me. And once that's done, I'll open up my XC workspace to see my new project. Oh, hello, pod library. Glad you could join us. Now remember that plist file I downloaded earlier? I'm just going to add it to my Xcode project like so. OK, now next up, we need to add two URL schemes to our project. These basically allow other Google apps to properly send information back to our application when the user is done signing in. Now to add a URL scheme, we're going to select our app target here, go to Info, and scroll down to the bottom where it says URL Schemes, and then click this plus button to add a new one. The first URL scheme we're going to add is our bundle ID. You can just add it here in the URL Scheme field and leave everything else as is. OK, so that one was pretty straightforward. But the next one we need to add is our OAuth2 client ID in reverse. I know, weird, right? Now, in case you don't have that memorized, you can actually find it here in the plist file that we just added to our project. See, there it is. Now we'll just copy that and paste it here in the URL scheme field. OK, finally we get to write a line of code. Hooray! Uh, now, before I get there, since I am doing this in Swift, I need to add a bridging header file. So I'm going to use the trick of creating a dummy Objective-C file, telling Xcode, yes, I would like you to create a bridging header file for me, and then deleting these two files. OK, now in my bridging header, I'm just going to import google slash signin.h. Now I can go into my app delegate, and in my application did finish launching method, I'm going to make a call to ggl.context.sharedinstance.configure with error. Now this method will look and see what google slash CocoaPod libraries I have added in our project. If it finds any, it'll attempt to configure them by reading in constants from that plist file that I added. In fact, if I run my app right now, You'll see here in the console that it successfully configured sign-in. It'll also report that it didn't bother trying to configure things like analytics or AdMob because we haven't installed those CocoaPods yet. But if we had, it would try and set those libraries up as well. Whew, that was an awful lot of setup, but we're done. Let's get into writing some more code. So there are two delegates you need to be aware of when you're dealing with sign-in. The GID sign-in delegate is the delegate that will be called when the user has finished signing in. Good candidates for this are your app delegate, your main view controller, or perhaps a singleton class that represents your user. The GID sign-in UI delegate is the delegate that our library requires in order to properly display the embedded web view. It's a little weird in that it's required for you to set this, but it contains all optional methods that you generally don't need to write if your sign-in delegate ends up being a view controller. So very frequently, you're just going to say that the UI view controller that contains your sign-in button is your sign-in UI delegate, and then not implement any of the optional methods. That's what I typically do anyway. This will make more sense when you see it in action. Trust me. So let's start with our GID sign-in delegate. I think maybe I'll declare that my app delegate is my sign-in delegate, so I'll add the declaration here. And I can set it to self here in my application did finish launching method. 
And now I'll need to implement the required sign in, did sign in for user with error method. Uh, for now, I'm just going to print a few pieces of information if we succeed and print out the error message if we fail. Note that I'm still on Swift 1.2, so I'm using println instead of print. Oh, and by the way, note that also getting an error here is pretty common. The most frequent cause is that the user clicks cancel instead of signing in. So like, don't throw an assertion error here or anything, handle it gracefully. Oh, and while we're here at the app delegate, I'll also need to handle any incoming URLs. Remember, the way Google's Natives apps send information back to our application is through an incoming URL. That's why I had to set those crazy URL schemes back at the beginning, as you'll recall. So we need to make sure we capture these incoming URLs. And the way to do that is to add a application open URL source application annotation method and pass in all the information along to the corresponding Google sign in handle URL method, kind of like so. OK, next up, let's go add that GID sign in UI delegate that I was talking about. I'm going to go into our view controller here, because that's where the sign in button is eventually going to live. I'm going to declare that it's our GID sign in UI delegate. And then I will set that down here in our view did load method. And then we'll never speak of it again. Really, that, that's all I need to do here. All that's left to do now is actually sign the user in. Now for that, I'm going to use a button. Adding a sign in button using Google's built in sign in button class is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll just need to add a view to my storyboard here. We'll make it roughly button shaped. And uh, maybe we can add some constraints to align it properly. Then I'm going to declare that our views custom class is a GID sign in button. And uh, we're done. No, really, that's it. Because this view is now a sign in button, it knows to start the Google sign in process when the user clicks on it. Heck, let's run this right now in the simulator and see. So you can see that my mysterious gray rectangle is now a beautiful blue sign in button. And when I click it, Google starts the sign in process. You'll also see that I get the embedded view controller because there are no native Google apps to swap to in the simulator. And when I'm done, you'll get a printout here of those messages that I put in my did sign in for user delegate method. Now, obviously, it'd be silly to make our user sign in every time they start our app, which is what our app currently does. Most likely, in the real world, you're going to want to cache some of your user's profile information locally so that when they return, you remember who they are right away. However, we're still going to want to sign them in using Google services as well. Partly, this will ensure that if, say, our user updates their profile picture or something on Google's side, that will get re retrieved and reflected in our app. But also, if we're using Google Sign-In in order to perform other actions using Google services, and I'll talk about that more in the next video, we'll be sure to have an up-to-date access token. So to help with this, Google also has a Sign-In Silently method. This method will try to sign the user in without showing them any kind of confirmation dialog. So when we start up our app, we're going to want to call it. If it works, then our user is signed in, and we can update any info as needed. And if it doesn't, well, then we can show our Sign-In button. Now note that this sign in silently method will only succeed if our user has signed into the app previously on this device, hasn't signed out in the meantime, and we haven't asked for any additional permissions or scopes. So uh, let's go ahead and add this. So in my view controller's view did load method, I'm just going to make a call to sign in silently. And now when I start my app, I'll wait a moment, and uh, I'm once again signed in. Now that we can sign the user in, we're going to want to sign them out, at the very least for testing purposes. So I'm going to add a simple button here. Now I'm just going to create an action to go with it. And in there, I will call GID sign in dot shared instance dot sign out. Note that no delegate methods are called here or anything. It's all done locally and nearly instantly. And now I can sign out and sign in as much as I'd like. Finally, it'd be awfully nice if our interface actually changed when the user signs in. For that, I'm going to need my app delegate, which, as you recall, is my sign-in delegate, to talk to my view controller here. Obviously, there's a lot of ways we could do that. We could create our own protocol and delegate. We could send up an NS notification. But I think I'll do it by setting a property in my app delegate that is a method to call when my user has finished signing in. And then I can have my view controller pass an appropriate method to my app delegate as that property. Now, I'm not going to go over all the plumbing here. You've probably done something like this before. But when all is said and done, I'm going to have my app delegate tell my view controller to call this refresh interface method. Now, this method will see if there is a valid current user object on my GID sign in shared instance. And if so, I can populate a few on screen labels and images. Put that together with a few more UI elements, and you might have something that looks a little like this. Ah, nice. So there you go. That's how you can get started adding Google Sign-In to your own iOS project. For more details, please be sure to check out all the documentation here. But you know, we're not done yet. For a few more interesting topics on Sign-In, follow me to the next video. Come on.
what, what are you still doing here? I'm, I'm waiting for you in the next video. Go on, click it right there. Come on, we gotta go. There's learning to be had, people.